the Mass for the third Sunday of Easter. Hear us, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, and send forth thy holy angel from heaven to guard, cherish, protect, visit, and defend all who participate in this Mass. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, in whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Amen. Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Upon these two commands hang all the law and the prophets.
A lesson from the Acts of the Apostles. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. Let all the house of Israel therefore know assuredly that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises to you and to your children and to all that are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other words and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will recite the psalm responsibly by full verse. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me, the grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bond. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, hallelujah. Our second lesson is from the first letter of Peter. If you invoke as Father him who judges each one impartially according to his deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your fathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest at the end of the times for your sake. Through him you have confidence in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere love of the brethren, love one another earnestly from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. On the first day of the week, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation which you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. And one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel, yes. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. And they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish men and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He appeared to be going further, but they constrained him, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished out from their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven gathered together and those who were with them who said, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In this Easter season, we cry out, Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. But we also find ourselves in a season in which life is not quite normal. We are told to shelter in place. There are those amongst us who live in fear, and all of us live in some degree of uncertainty about what comes next just as the disciples gathered in Jerusalem are wondering what comes next, even though Simon Peter has now seen the risen Christ. And Cleopas and his companion, who isn't named, but we have to assume it's his wife, as they walk along the road, they're sitting there, and they said, and we had hoped that this was the one to redeem Israel. We know that Easter is a renewal of hope, which is why we cry out, the Lord is risen indeed. So let's look at what's happening in this story. Uh, the fact that the second disciple walking along the road isn't named could be just, you know, the way Luke does things. Luke was not an eyewitness to things. He starts at the very beginning of his gospel and says, I wasn't there, but I went and interviewed people. And being a person raised in first century Greek culture, he has a fairly low view of women. And so the fact that he doesn't name Cleopas' wife probably shouldn't concern us. But I want you 
to think about this not as something that isn't historically accurate, but as something that presents us an opportunity for a literary device. And the literary device is this, that each one of us is that unnamed disciple walking along the road to Emmaus with Cleopas, and Jesus falls in beside us on the road. And as we walk along, we say, he was a man mighty in deed and in word, and we thought he was the one. This is where a lot of people get trapped in their faith journey. They conceive of Jesus as an idea, as a person who existed in history, who maybe had very important things to tell us. Maybe we should pay close attention to it. But if we do not recognize the risen Christ and worship him as God, our faith is about that big. It's nothing more than ideas. And we can come up with other ideas to compete with them. And that's certainly what happens in the world around us and too often in the church. But when we recognize that the risen Christ is among us, then the world changes. Hope is eternal. Our lives are made new every day. At the very end of the entire canon of Scripture, Jesus says from the throne in heaven, See, I make all things new. And that obtains particularly in days like today when we sit there and we say, What's going on? Is the pandemic going to abate? Are more people going to get infected? Am I going to get infected? If and when I get infected, will I just recover or will things go downhill from there? We worry about these things. That's perfectly natural. But we remember as well that the hope we live in is that all life is new, that life is eternal in Christ. So let's go back to that road. We're walking down the road together, Clopas and each one of us, and we lived in hope that this was the one to restore Israel, to bring about newness in life, to re bring the kingdom about, restore the kingdom. And then we recognize him when he takes and blesses and breaks the bread and gives it to us. Our eyes are opened, the eyes of faith allow us to see, and Jesus is gone from our sight. What just happened? Well, what happened is what will happen in a few minutes on the altar, when we will take and bless bread and offer it to God and to the people, and we will do the same with the wine. We are reminded of who Jesus is. Our eyes of faith are open to participate in the risen Lord, in the breaking of the bread, in Eucharist, in the communion of his body and blood. We are reminded and made new each time we participate in the Eucharist. Now, most of us, some of us are here today, we're lucky we get to participate in the Eucharist. But most of us are watching this on a video where we can but participate spiritually. And remember this. Remember as you participate spiritually that in your baptismal vows, the first promise you made in your baptismal vows was that we will gather in the apostles' teaching in the fellowship, in the prayers, in the breaking of bread. In other words, we'll gather for worship. The Apostles' teaching takes us back through the scriptures that Jesus took each one of us as disciples back through on the road to Emmaus, pointing to who the Christ is, pointing to God's plan. The fellowship and the prayers, we offer the prayers together in Jesus' name. And the breaking of the bread? We gather in worship and participate in his body and in his blood. And when we do that, we are renewed. Our faith is made new. And then when Jesus is not right in front of us, we say with the disciples hurrying back from Emmaus to Jerusalem, how our hearts burned, how our hearts were afire as he opened the scriptures to us, as God spoke to us. As you sit at home now and participate in this Eucharist spiritually, let your heart be a fire to renew that real presence with Jesus in the breaking of the bread. When this pandemic is over, and we're all gathered in church together again, 
we will recognize the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread. And when that happens, we will be made new. In the meantime, as we shelter in place, let your hearts burn and let you hurry with your steps to Jerusalem spiritually, that when we gather again to gain, again in the breaking of the bread, we may recognize and worship the risen Lord. Thanks be to God. Continuing, let's affirm our faith in God and in His Holy Church. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that He has seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us did and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and for the world. Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Brian, our ordinary, and Jeff, our rector, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Donald, our president, Tate, our governor, and Johnny, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people, to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation they may honor thee with thy, their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and suffer all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray for the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, especially Nancy Brand, Paul Brewer, Sylvia Cantu, Mary Ann Covington, Billy Joe Dees, Jordan Downs, Dolores Fleming, Ray Fraser, Michelle Gibson, Hannah Green, Bill Green, Wendy Hazard, Abby Hedrick, Carol Henley, Bill Herson, Elizabeth Higginbotham, Cindy Hickson, Laura Hopkins, Pam Ishi, David Jackson, Kevin Jones, Ashley Lewis, Beverly May, Carly Miller, Muffy and Tim Lynch, 
Karen and Luke Mitchell, Laura Palmer, Adrian O'Neill, Kyle Pearson, Sue and Gerald Peavy, Mike Ray, Gene Sanderson, Christopher Sessoms, Robert Sharp, Doris Smith, Tim Stinson, Warren Strain, Lori Lee Baines, Haley Thompson, Betty Townsend, Wesley Warner, Francis Warren, Sherman Wellborn, Jerry Wellmans, Jacob Whitaker, and those whom we now name. We pray for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Shane Green. We pray for your handmaid to the child, especially Anne Griffin, Isabel Kate, Tiffany McElroy. For those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Will Char. And we pray for the protection of the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad, especially Cedric Bolden, Will Chard, Danielle Lewis, Barbara McLeod, Stacey Pickering, William Schaffenberg, and Jackson Touchstone. We pray that all those who have passed into your kingdom, Lord, may be in continual growth in thy love and service, and that we may be granted grace so to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, of St. John, our patron, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and then are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of His great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who in heart and repentance and true faith turn unto Him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you into everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Walk in love as Christ, he loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. Thank mm -hmm.
say, we're clear of his companion on the road to the mass, offering special intentions that we may join them on that road towards the breaking of bread and prayers, that our hearts may burn in us for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Intentions are also offered this day for all who are affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, remembering those who have grown ill, those who lend them aid in health care. Remember those whose lives have been altered and made uncertain by the economic consequences. We remember as well those who are rebuilding after natural disasters, especially those tornadoes in the past several weeks that have torn through the Pine Belt region. May God have mercy on them, uphold and strengthen all who seek to lend them aid. And may the souls of all the faithful depart into the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Do this as often as you shall drink it in 
the remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy good beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial of thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance of thus the passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits endured unto us by the same. And we must humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us. And of thy almighty goodness, thou say to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receive them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we are desire of thy Father, and this personally to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant thy merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and in good faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain the remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present to thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, living sacrifice unto thee. How we beseech thee that we and all those who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthy receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, being filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and make one body of him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy, there are many holy sins to offer unto thee in sacrifice. Yet we receive thee to accept this our bounden duty and service not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now,
come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and ye in us. Amen. The gift of God for the people of God.
with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and thus assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. May God, who through the water of baptism raised us from sin and the newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin and to true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The mass has ended. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.